Hey everybody, I'm gonna start this video right off by saying I'm a skeptic and I'm a little bit dubious of the claim about the world's best speaker, but it's not my claim. I saw this speaker design on the Tech Ingredients YouTube channel, I'll leave a link to their video on these down below, and they claim that they are the world's best speakers and they're not very expensive to build, so I thought I'd put their test to my ear and see if I agreed that they really are the world's best speakers. So I picked up all of the parts. I'll leave links to those down in the description below as well if you'd like to follow along. And um, I'm gonna build them today, and I'm gonna take a listen and see if I agree if these really are the world's best speakers or not. Let's get started. Let's go over the main items you're gonna to need to build these speakers. The first is this project foam board that you can pick up at your local big box store. Apparently this stuff is the secret sauce to making this work because it's both very lightweight and very rigid. It's not like styrofoam that has a lot of play. This stuff is really, really stiff, but it's also about an inch thick. And apparently those three properties are what makes this the ideal candidate for the body of the speaker. Now a foam board all by itself can't make any sound, so we're gonna be gluing these audio exciters to the back of them. These are made by Dayton Audio, and I'm using the 40 watt version that are 32 millimeters in diameter. They offer a wide variety of sizes and shapes, but on the Tech Ingredients channel, they say it doesn't really matter which one you choose. They all sound more or less the same when used in conjunction with this foam. And finally, you're gonna need a small amplifier to drive these exciters. I'm gonna be using the Fosse Audio BT-20A. I like this one because it's got separate treble and bass controls, and it offers a Bluetooth connection so I can stream music straight off of my phone to these speakers. So the first step in the construction is to round off these corners, and you wanna give them a four inch radius. So I've got this bucket here that has an eight inch diameter. I'm just gonna bring it in so that it's really close to each edge, leaving about a pen's width or so. And then we'll just trace around the bucket, right along the edge. With these corners marked, you can cut them out with a utility blade like this. I found it's easiest to make several shallow cuts going a little deeper each time. And don't worry if it's not perfect, we're gonna clean it up in just a minute. Next, we're gonna use some 220 grit sandpaper to smooth over the corners and to clean up those edges. You're not looking to make it perfect, but just round over those corners so that they're nice and smooth. The next step is to dull this shiny surface that's on here. We're gonna use a random orbital sander again with 220 grit sandpaper. All right, so with this all shaped and sanded, we are ready to consider how to mount it. And the recommendation is to drill a small hole here and another small hole here, into which you can put a cotter pin like this. Now these cotter pins are nice because the metal arms will extend far enough into the board to support all of the weight, but it will give you a nice loop to put a piece of string or fishing line through, which will allow these to be suspended completely in the air so that they can vibrate freely. And they need to be able to vibrate as much as possible so that they can produce the best sound possible. So this is the epoxy that I prefer to use, but I'm filming this in the winter time and it can get a little bit thick when it gets cold. It's kind of chilly out in the garage. So one quick tip for you is you can put these into a water bath in a sink for a few minutes to warm them up and then they flow a lot easier. I'm just gonna use the cotter pin to mix them because since the cotter pin's going down into the hole anyway, it's you may as well go ahead and use it to mix it up. I wanted this to be as runny as possible, so that's why I warmed it up, because I need to be able to let it drip like that off the end of the cotter pin down into that hole. 
So we'll fill each hole with a little bit of epoxy first and then we'll drop the cotter pins in. So I'm just scooping up a little bit of the epoxy at a time and then letting it drip off the end of this cotter pin down into that hole. So let's talk a little bit about the placement of where we're going to stick our driver on the back of this panel. Intuition says, ah, stick it right in the center, that's going to sound great. But they did some testing on the Tech Ingredients channel, and they found that there are going to be some frequency ranges where things get a little muddy in, uh, if you place it straight in the center. Whereas if you place it off center, then a different set of frequencies kind of can get a little bit muddy. And so I'm going to put one in the dead center of one panel, and one I'm going to put off center at the three-fifths and two-fifths position. That is, I'm going to go three-fifths of the way up from the bottom and two-fifths of the way in from the side. And the uh, result of that is that one panel is going to have a slightly different frequency response than the other panel, but the blend of the two is going to make for a nice sound. Now these panels are 24 inches across, and if I want to go two-fifths of the way from, the, from this edge over towards the center, that's going to be right about 9.6 inches, which is right about there. And if I want to go three-fifths of the way up from the bottom, that's going to be at 14.4 inches. So that's going to be right about there. So this right here is where I want to center my driver. So placing these little exciters is really easy. They come with this very strong 3M adhesive. Just peel off this backing cover and then place it directly with the center of this, directly over the center of your mark that you've placed. Also, pay attention, you want to have your wiring leads pointing down so that it's going to make it so that the wires just hang naturally down off the back of the speaker. All right, here we go. I'm going to place this one, and all you need to do is line it up and place it, press it in, and you're done. That adhesive really is strong enough. I can pick up the whole panel now just by picking up this exciter. Now I'll just tie a short piece of string from these two mounting points, and then we're ready to test this. All right, I've got both speakers hung up behind me and I've been careful to make sure that the wiring behind them is pulled back from the drivers so that nothing is going to buzz or touch the backs of the panels. They are just floating completely in space. I've got some royalty free music here and I'm about to hear them for the first time and we'll find out if these really are the best speakers in the world. I'm still dubious. Here we go. We'll start with some classical and then we'll work our way up from there. Holy cow! I'm sure my mic is not doing this justice. Those sound amazing. Okay, so it sounds good with cello. Um, let's try something else another cello song, of course. That is unbelievably good. Um, I'm kind of speechless. There's plenty of volume to fill the, a full three-bay garage like this. The clarity is outstanding. It's maybe a little, how do I say this? It's missing a little bit of the central part of the body of the tone. Almost like the treble is up too high, but I can turn down my treble here, which only cuts the really, really high stuff. It is missing a little bit of the, the meat of it. Boy, but it's pretty balanced. Let's try something with a little bit more of a beat to it. It's unbelievable. Um, I won't say they're the best speakers in the world, but they're the best speakers you can build for this kind of money. They are unbelievably inexpensive, very easy to put together, and oh my goodness, do they sound good. 
The most amazing part to me is the sound stage. It's a big, open feeling sound. Um, they project better than most bookshelf speakers that I've listened to. It just feels like I'm actually there. Although the tonal reproduction is maybe not quite as good as some bookshelf speakers. In particular, the low end is a little bit lacking. But I think that's because of the size of the panels that I used. In the example video on Tech Ingredients, he did two different sizes. He did the 24 by 24, and then he also did a 24 by 48. That's loud. And I believe the 24 by 48's produced a lot more of the low end, a lot more bass. I may go ahead and add some 20 by, 24 by 48's to these. They sound amazing, they really do. Let's try some others. I'm gonna pull my microphone off here and I'll try and hold it where I think you'll get the best sense of what these things are doing. As a quick comparison, let me turn off the Bluetooth on my phone and let's hear that same song out of my phone speakers. Turn the Bluetooth back on and we'll switch back to the speakers. Yeah, I just can't get over how good these speakers sound. They are outstanding. Let me bring you in closer and show you them while they're working. They vibrate a ton, which is of course what makes the sound. I have to admit, I'm completely blown away. These are better than I expected. I won't go so far as to just call them the outright best speakers in the world, but they're probably the best bang for the buck speakers given what they cost to build. They're really inexpensive and they do sound amazing. Hey, if you've liked this video, you can tell me about that by hitting the like button down below. And if there's something you saw that I could have maybe done differently or you've got a suggestion for something I could do in the future, let me know about that down in the comments. And if you'd like to see more content like this, of course, you can think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there. And as always, thank you very much for watching. To him for the first time. I've loaded some royalty free music onto my iPod here. iPod. I haven't had an iPod in like nine years, right? <laughs> Let's try this again. Effort, <laughs> yeah. Let's see it. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm going to start this video by saying I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. Skeptical, skeptical. Now placing these is really simple. They come with some very strong 3M adhesive on the ring here. You simply peel, oh, that's too bad. It tore. Well, that stinks. Ugh.